explore some principles for human centered design and illustrate all the discussion with one of our devs, the Clever Sport. I hope you enjoy. Online courts are not an alternative to the justice system, they are the justice system. In 10 years, more cases will be settled online than offline. This prediction, made by his future Susskind, envision the changes we start living in the coming age of decentralized courts. But what challenges this shift will bring and how UX can contribute to that change? Blockchain technology has an important role in the coming transformations in the power to approximate people reducing friction on legal processes. How centralized justice works? Crypto economics incentivize jurors to decide honestly. Where blockchain guarantees a decentralized procedure and smart contracts automatically enforce the ruling. Legal processes traditionally bureaucratic, centralized and not so transparent for the end users start being reimagined through the eyes of legal design. Important research has been made to find how to innovate and bring more human-centered approach to legal processes. This is Legal Design Lab. Uh, it is an interdisciplinary team based at Stanford Law School and T-School that makes uh, important research trying to bring innovation to the world of law. It is led by Margaret Hagen and has been making an important uh, research contributing to, to bring innovation and a more engaging uh, contribution to the, the world of law. Um, legal design uh, works on the intersection of design to make things people can and want to use, tech, technology to increase the effectiveness of people's actions, and law to promote a fair and just society and to empower people. A few core principles emerged from the research being made by Legal Design Lab. Number one, make your user empowered and strategic. Your product needs to make, uh, help your users to solve any problem they are facing. Present information in as a journey through a process with discrete steps, start points and end points. Give your user the overview of their new terrain, then let the zoom in for details. These simple principles or mindset applied to legal depths can be very helpful to contribute to a more human-centered and engaging solutions. Um, but the, the whole of UX designers in this process is to advocate for the end user, yeah. approximating people and making them the, the solutions more engaging and human-centered. Uh, a, a key skill in this process is empathy. And as you can see on the image, uh, the more you, you know about your user, the more data you gather about them, the more you understand and engage with your users, the um, higher their ability to really impact and positively impact their lives. For example, pity, I'm sorry for you. Sympathy, I feel for you. But empathy, I feel with you. That's the mindset. How to practice empathy in UX? Explore qualitative user research methods to dig into user behaviors, motivations, and concerns. Explore open-ended questions like what comes to your mind when thinking about a debt? What could be improved? Incentivize users' feedback and track key metrics. Make use of empathy maps. As a user, I know I not always say what I mean or mean what I say. Empathy mapping helps dig into uh, what what user says, thinks, does, and feels. A good approach is to combine qualitative and quantitative user research to dive into users' behaviors, attitudes, and motivations. Imagine, for example, a user says something like, "I want a fast interface." What's hiding behind that? 
he could be thinking, for example, this is really annoying. Refresh, he refreshes the page several times. He is impatient. It, it takes too much to complete, complete the transaction. Have I done something wrong? Did I lose my tokens? This generates a kind of anxiety and can be very bad for human user experience. Before moving to present uh, the Clarus use case, I just want to show you one more thing. This is known as Stephen P. Anderson's UX pyramid. At the base of the pyramid relies the task-related attributes. These are the functional, it works properly, it doesn't have any bugs, is it reliable? It's, it is usable? And at the, top, at the top, we find the experience attributes. These are the convenient for the users. It is pleasurable for them. And most importantly, is it meaningful to them? Anderson explains that this process can be seen as a basic maturity continuum. Uh, projects normally start as a functional solution to a problem and then evolves to a higher layer to reach the top, where it, where it can have a more uh, meaningful and more impactful uh, way to, to achieve the, to, to reach the users. Sorry. So, a good point to start when thinking about uh, legal legal solution is to reframe our thinking. So, how do we create a legal solution that is open, transparent and decentralized, empowering people that normally don't have access to legal services to solve any kind of dispute? Over 5 billion people lack access to justice. 3 to 5 percent of online transactions end in a dispute. Give my money back. No, I did my job. And as you know, despite the technological evolution, traditional courts haven't changed much in the last centuries. What if you had a place where everyone could work as a juror? A software engineer could help in solving disputes related to software engineering, a games expert could help in solving disputes related to games, and if they receive financial incentives for that. This is Clarus Court. Clarus Court uh, allows jurors to join a court and work as a juror, choose a court they have the competency to arbitrate, and receive incentives for that. Jurors can join a court by staking PNK tokens to the court they select, They can see the cases that still demand voting, the cases in progress and closed, and also can track their voting performance, which is the percentage of times the jurors vote coherently, vote with the majority of jurors. But how does it work? Imagine Alice hires Bob for marketing services. Not satisfied with the results, she raises a dispute. They send the case to Clarus, Clarus, and receive the decision back. Both parties on the dispute, Alice and Bob, need to pay arbitration fees in Gitter to open the dispute. I'll explain why and how the arbitration fees are used soon. On the other side, at Clarus Court, users need to stake PNK to join a court. After staking PNK, they are eligible to be randomly selected for a case. Jurors can see all the cases on my cases page, which basically have an overview of the key information for the jurors before letting zoom in for details, design principle, legal, legal design principle three. Then the jurors can see key information of the case, for example, the uh, court name, in this case, car insurance, 
The short description of the, of the dispute, car insurers do not pay for the repair. The coherent rewards, which are the rewards the jurors will win by voting coherently, by voting with the majority of jurors. The voting deadline, and also a seed tails button. The seed details, clicking on seed details button, jurors are led to the case details page which contains all the information they need to properly evaluate the case and cast a vote. In this case, jurors can see the title of the dispute, a short description, an evidence module, and a policies page. And it's important to note that if the juror uh, drawn for a case on an appealing round, he will also be able to see a dispute history module with all the justifications and votes from previous rounds. At the bottom, jurors can justify the votes and choose between one of the options. In this example, uh, you can see at the bottom, there are two options. In this case, Alice or Bob. Alice or Bob. But uh, there are also other modules depending on the structure of the case, with multiple choice, and also and more than two options. So depending on the case, the dispute is sent to Claros, we have different modules to accommodate this kind of disputes. Uh, an important challenge we faced when designing our DEP was how to display evidence. At the initial version, we used to display evidence like document icons that proved not to be the best approach as we evolve the DEP and get more complex cases. So we needed a simple way to display evidence, something like uh, informal conversation, something that anyone could understand. The solution we found was to display evidence like formal messages. They are ordered, uh, simple and sequential. This way, the evidence also can dialogue with each other. Each piece of evidence can also have a context instead of only being just individuals uh, part, separated part of evidence. Uh, so, to, to understand more how the, the mechanism, incentive mechanism works, I'll explain how is the token head distribution. Uh, on the same example, as we said, Alice and, Bob's, Alice and Bob get to, into a dispute. On Claire's court, we have the jurors, you can see at the right, five jurors. Four of them at the top voted for Alice. Only Ignazi has voted for Bob. Being considered the winner, Alice receives her arbitration fees in Italy back. Being the loser, Bob Bob's arbitration fees are redistributed among the coherent jurors, the jurors who have voted with the majority. At the jurors' side, Ignazi also loses his tokens. They are redistributed to the coherent jurors. So, the combination of Peter and PNK, uh, a juror win by voting coherently, voting with the majority, is called at the DEP coherent rewards. This is a way we found to gamification, to try some gamification to the system and make sure the user gets motivated to continue voting, continue arbitrating cases, and seems to be working quite well. Um, the incentive mechanism is based on the shelling point and wisdom of the crowds, and it, it helps to, to get the users with the, the correct incentives to properly continue voting honestly and try to, to make a fair arbitration. To, to illustrate a bit more about this, I'll show you a real user case. <clears throat> this is Mark, uh, one of our uh, more active jurors. As you can see, he has voted uh, arbitrated in 29 cases to that date using Claire's court. He had been making some money both in Eastern and PNK by helping solve disputes in several courts, especially one of our courts, the blockchain court. 
as you can see in this example, how the how the incentive mechanism works to incentivize users, incentivize jurors to to continue voting, to to, to make a fair decision to the system, and how how this contributes to a more just dispute resolution system. Uh, another challenge we faced was how to reach uh, non-crypto users, how to dialogue with them. As a legal tech, uh, we've been constantly talking to legal professionals and law specialists, and also have our own fellowship program which brings insights from law professionals. And with, we think that it was important to have a, a way to dialogue with them to, to sh display how, how the product works without have, having to, to, prep, to pass to, to all the, the friction at the beginning. So we decided to have a reverted approach to how to reach the dialogue with non crypto users. Instead of having them to pass through all the onboarding process of opening a wallet, saving the private keys and so on, we decided to revert that and create something that uh, we can display for lawyers, attorneys, judges, and also researchers, so they can test the product, they can see how it works, and through the, the way, and through the, 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 the generated interest in our solution, if you are eager to get into crypto, buy some internet BNK, you really test it. So, before finishing, I want to, to bring to share some insights for more engaging solutions. They are very simple insights, quite obvious, but for that reason, they tend to be ignored when designing a, a deck, when creating a product. So, I uh, will state that. So, basically, uh, be visual, explore visual metaphors to communicate ideas. Invest in flexibility, modularity, and simplicity. Assume a beginner's mindset when building a deck. Communicate in end user's language. Avoid jargons, technical terms. Make the deck accessible to anyone. We need, we need to, to make sure that anyone can use our, our product, not only crypto users, not only experts. Also, be transparent and enhance user awareness regarding all states of the transa transactions, as well as, as well as its costs and risks. It's quite important point when designing a app to make sure the user knows exactly uh, where the transaction will lead him, how, how, it will, how much it will cost, and all the, the risks involved. Uh, to conclude, uh, I would like to invite everyone to test Claros Court. It's on mainnet at court.claros.io. And if you just want to, to take a look how it works, and the off-chain court is also on claros.io slash court-tool. Thank you.